السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده ولا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله All thanks and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. Peace be upon all of you dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our new program called The Message of the Quran. As I mentioned before, inshallah from now on with this session we are going to be focusing on the Quranic verses and of course it would be Great to start with the opening chapter, Surah Al-Fatiha. So tonight and the following Monday, I will be focusing on Surah Al-Fatiha. This is one of the most important chapters. I don't know if you can go which one is more important or so. All the chapters and the verses are equally important. But this beautiful chapter is the most repeated chapter in our, uh, you know, daily lives that we recite in our prayers. So that's really important to know what is the meaning of this chapter. Not only that, the deeper meaning, not only bare translation, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, what is the ex expectation? So that's why inshallah, I am going to focus on this beautiful chapter today and the next Monday. And then the following Mondays, we will inshallah, I will select certain verses and, and share my reflections over those verses, inshallah. And the new time, as you see on the screen, from now on until we change uh, at 7.30 p.m. So tonight, my recite recitation is going to be from Surah Al-Hashir, chapter 59, and the last page, verses from 18 to 24. Let me recite first, and I will put the verses on the screen as usual. And then after the rest station, we're going to focus on Surah Al-Fatiha, insha'Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَلَّ الذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيت 
مفتاه خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضرب للناس لعلهم يتفكرون والله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم والله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن العزيز المؤمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون والله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين One more time السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters ورحمة الله وبركاته peace be upon all of you and the mercy and the blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى I pray and I hope that you had a wonderful day uh, so it's, it's a new subject or new session, inshallah, the message of the Quran from now on. And as I mentioned at the beginning, today I will be focusing on Surah Al-Fatiha, uh, the most repeated chapter in Muslims' life. And one of the beautiful names of Al-Fatiha is also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned actually in Surah Al-Hijr by saying وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said, and we have certainly given you, O Muhammad, seven of the often repeated verses and the great Quran. So سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ Oft repeated chapter or the verses 
from the Quran. So imagine we are praying five times a day. If only you count the four prayers, you recite at least 17 times. And if you include Sunnah prayers into it, and it goes all the way up to 40. And if you add other Naf prayers, maybe it goes beyond 50 times. So this chapter is so important. That's why we constantly recite and remind ourselves. So I think we should be mindful of uh, what we say and what we recite, as we should be mindful of our prayers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in different places and the most famous one from Surah Al-Mu'minun, chapter 23, Allah said, The believers are those who pray with khushu'a, utmost respect, utmost uh, uh, humility, and then also mindful of their prayers. They focus, uh, they know what they are doing. They are just standing before their creators. And then they also know what they are saying. So that is why Surah Al-Fatiha is really important to focus on first more than any other parts of the Quran, because as I said, inshallah, this is the most repeated one. And before I start, I am going to divide Surah Al-Fatiha into two uh, parts. Um, the reason is there are so many things to say. I don't want to just go superficially. So I think we need to spend a little time on this beautiful chapter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also divided this chapter into two pieces between himself and his servants, us. And there's a hadith Qudsi. I will share this one, inshallah, for, uh, in the next uh, session. So until then, you know, wait for this hadith. But I'm just gonna, you know, share the first phrase or the first portion, portion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in hadith Qudsi. He said, Yaqulullah ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nasfay. He said, I divided the prayer, it means Surah Al-Fatiha, into two halves between myself and my servants. And then he said, Fanisfuha li wa nisfuha li abdi. He said, the, the first half or one half is for me and the second half or one half for my servants. So today, inshallah tonight, I'm going to focus on the first half, inshallah. First, uh, what is the meaning of Al-Fatiha? Al-Fatiha is the opening. And when we say Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter. But Surah Al-Fatiha has few other names. And one of them is, as I mentioned, uh, and we, we heard from the verse, Sab'an min al-Mathani, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, after repeated seven, or the verses or the chapter. And then the other one is most commonly used is Umur Kitab, mother of the book. That shows also importance of Surah Al-Fatiha. And then another one, which shows the importance again, says the name, Asasul Quran. It means the foundation of the holy text, Al-Quran al kareem so these are some of the names of Surah Al-Fatiha. And one thing really unique with Surah Al-Fatiha also, dear brothers and sisters, Basmala is part of Surah Al-Fatiha. With it, you know, this was a big debate between scholars, even the, uh, the imams between uh, the imam of Madhab, Madahib, the jurisprudence, uh, the fiqh. Um, and uh, some of the, you know, like the imams or the scholars said that, you know, the, the, the best mala that you see before each and every surah, are they part of the surah or not? Let's say for Surah Al-Fatiha, for sure, it's, it's, a, it's clear evidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, it's seven verses. With Surah uh, with best mala, it is seven. But for the other surahs, let's say Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, and Surah Al-Nisa, and so on and so forth, they were debatable. Some said these are part of surah. Uh, uh, some said no, because, you know, this is a tradition of Prophet that you should mention before you recite uh, when you start a new surah. Um, as we know, there are 114 chapters in the Quran. Each chapter starts with Basmala, except Surah Al-Tawbah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with ultimatum. And then that missing 
basmala takes place in Surah Al Naml. So, with that, we still have 114 basmala in the Quran. But um, this one is for sure that's part of Surah Al Fatiha, um, but the rest is open for debate. Now, since this is part of the uh, chapter, I will start with basmala. Uh, let's focus on the meaning of basmala. Basmala is saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and the bare translation is in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. And, and the basmala, reciting basmala, saying Bismillah is recommended before starting any action or deed. Whatever we do, before I always mention, before we eat, before we drink, before we pray, before we drive, before we start speaking, we always say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. And there is a saying of uh, Prophet, peace be upon him, anything starts with, uh, without basmala is cut off, says Abtar. Uh, so that means you will not get any blessings from whatever you do. So it is so important and crucial to start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most merciful and the most compassionate. Now in this beautiful phrase, there are uh, three important words that we need to focus. And the first one is we hear the name Allah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, in the name of God. Allah is the name of our Lord, our creator, our sustainer, our cherisher. So it is said that Allah is the greatest name of our Lord, our creator. So there is no better word than can describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we have 99 most beautiful attributes and the names. Again, as they said, if you, you know, sum it up, if you put all the 99 attributes and the names under one name, that would be Allah. And if you divide Allah into 99 beautiful attributes, you get those beautiful al-asma al-husna. So that's why the name Allah is so special and, and used just for our creator. And, and Allah mentioned uh, several of his names as attributes uh, for his name Allah. And he said in Surah Al-A'raf, So, and all the most beautiful names belong to Allah, so call on him by them. Whenever you use or whenever you pray, call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that name, say, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim or Ash-Shafi, the one who gives healing. So whatever your uh, you know um, request, any any attribute is linked to that, use that, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word Allah means the being who comprises all the attributes of perfection. As we always say, only Allah is perfect. The rest of his creation are not perfect, the only perfect being and the only divine being is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the being who possesses the best and the noblest qualities imaginable in the highest degree, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, the word Allah is the proper name and we need to make, uh, know that this is not derived from anything. And at the beginning, and some, and I see, you know, like the explanation, some says like at the beginning, alif lam is the, we call in the Arabic grammar, lam uh, ta'rif, so to make it definite, uh, if anything is indefinite, in order to make it um, definite, you just put alif and lam, like in English, uh, the article V, when you put a book, the book, any book and specific book that you are talking about. So they said, al ilah, you know, the God, later became Allah, they said, but no. Majority of the scholars are saying that Allah is a proper name and not derived or derived from anything. And Al is inseparable uh, from the name. It has nothing to do with that um, uh, Lam at Tarif. So that's, that's a unique name and which refers to the being himself as a personal name, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's, that's Allah. And then the, the following two attributes Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim that we need to uh, spend a little time. And Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are two names derived from Ar-Rahma. Rahma or Rahim. Ar-Rahma is the mercy. Rahim is womb. There's a link between. And for this, there is a beautiful hadith 
And whenever I read this hadith, it gives me a goosebump. So, and, and you, like, if you please pay attention, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frames this beautiful word in this, again, uh, Qudsi hadith. And this one is Al-Qurtubi said, the proof that these names are dragged from Ar-Rahma is what a Tirmidhi recorded. There is a, one of the Kutub al sitta uh, those six uh, hadith books. One of them is called a Tirmidhi. And he recorded and graded this hadith as Sahih. And this hadith is narrated for, uh, by Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. And he said that, you know, I heard from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, of course, Hadith Qudsi starts with "Qala Allahu Taala," and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that Allah said. What did He say? This part, the part that I was talking about, that gives me the chills or the goosebump. He said, "Anna Rahman khalaqtu Rahim wa shaqaqtu laha isman min ismi." He said, "I am a Rahman, and I created Rahim womb." like family relations, and derived a name for it from my name, he said. وَشَقَقْتُ لَهَا إِسْمًا مِنْ إِسْمِي I derived a name for it from my name. And then he said, فَمَنْ وَصَلَهَا وَصَلْتُهُ وَمَنْ قَطَعَهَا قَطَعْتُهُ He said, so whoever keeps it, I will keep ties to him or her. And whoever severs it, I will severe ties with him or her. It is a really powerful hadith. I know this is not our topic, but it's really a topic that we can spend the whole session. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the family ties here, and then specifically the word rahim or rahma, womb or the mercy, how it's linked. Because the relationship between mom and the child is so unique, so special. And, and that's why our prophet, beloved prophet, you know, got our attention more on the mom's side and then later your father. So that's, that's you know, rahim, womb, and rahmah, the mercy, the compassion that mom has towards his child is, is uncomparable, you know, in between uh, father and mom or others. So that's why this word is so unique and so uh, special. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first mentioned uh, his name, Allah, and then he used those attributes, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. And speaking of Ar-Rahman, there is a verse in Surah Al-Isra, Allah said, Say, O Muhammad, invoke Allah or invoke Ar-Rahman. By whatever name you invoke him, it is the same, for to him belong the best names. So, and that's why the scholar said that after Allah, the most beautiful and the most uh, important attribute or the name is Ar-Rahman. So, of course, this word took place 339 uh, times in the Quran. Now let's focus on this word, Ar-Rahman, the most gracious, most lovingly beneficent, uh, the, you know, their translation. But there are more than one meaning. There are layers of uh, the meaning of Ar-Rahman. The first meaning is to have gentleness and, and to love. And the second is to have mercy. So it's together, love and mercy. And there's a third dimension, and that one is to show favor. So, and both Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are coming from the same root word, Rahim, Rahamim. But in Arabic language, again, we call it wazm or, or form that when you take certain root word and put it into certain form, the meaning changes. And mostly we use fa'ala uh, to, as, as a you know, base. So the wazn from fa'ala, if you put in fa'lan, rahima, rahman. So when you put in this wazn, in this form, that the meaning becomes more intense. So they gave an example of ghadibah. Ghadibah, for example, is he got angry. And when you put ghadibah, the root word, into fa'lan form, that makes ghadban. Ghadban means extremely angry. So, but when you put 
Rahman, Rahima, into form of Salam, Rahman, that makes intensely, you know, merciful and gracious. So that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is so unique about this, uh, uh, you know, attribute, a Rahman. But when you take this Rahim root word and then put into Rahim, Fa'il form, and the meaning all of a sudden shifts towards continuity. So, and this Rahim appears in the Quran 93 times. And, and when you uh, apply the mercy and the compassion, so that means Allah is continuously compassionate and merciful. So Ar-Rahman is extremely, intensely merciful. Ar-Rahim is continuously merciful and compassionate. And the example for this form is Jamil, for example, again, from the form of Fa'il, means beautiful, con continuously. And then Kareem means honorable, continuously or generous. So that's the meaning of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. But you hear in the translation, the most merciful and the most compassionate. But when you go into the grammatical, um, you know, uh, approach um, and analysis, then this is this is what it is. So the first one is, you know, extremity or, or intensity. And the second one is, is the continuity, uh, Ar-Rahim. Now that's Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most merciful and the most compassionate. And then the second verse is, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So we say, Alhamd, to be to Allah, the Lord of all that exist. So Alhamdulillah, let's focus on this word first. First, And when you hear, you know, sometimes they say praise be to Allah. No, Alhamd is, is more comprehensive than praise. It's actually both praise and thanks. All praise and thanks be to Allah. So all thanks are due purely to Allah alone, not only of the objects that are being worshipped instead of him, nor any of his creation. So this is only to Allah. And these thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of you know, his innumerable favors and bounties upon us. And please remember the verse, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't be able to do so. So it's innumerable, countless blessings and the na'am. So for that, we show our gratitude, thankfulness, and then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the difference between praise and thanks? So um, hamd is more general in that is a statement of praise for one's characteristics. And thanks are given for what was done, not just merely for characteristics. So the hamd, the states, the, the state covers both thankfulness and the praise. The difference between praise and the thankfulness. Praise is that because you know you do it because of the characteristics of the person or the being, in this case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the thanks is, you know, whatever it has uh, done for you or given for what was done to you. So that's that's the meaning of thankfulness. Uh, so in this case, Alhamd covers both thanks and praise. And there is a beautiful hadith that I should share with you. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Aftalu dhikr la ilaha illallah and wa aftalu dua alhamdulillah. So the best dhikr remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is la ilaha illallah means there is no God worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or there is no God but the God. So uh, this is really beautiful uh, dhikr that we should constantly remind ourselves and say it with tongue, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. And then the next one he said, wa aftalu dua, alhamdulillah. And the best supplication is saying alhamdulillah. So again, we should say alhamdulillah constantly, la ilaha illallah and alhamdulillah. Now in this beautiful verse, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Another word that we need to focus is rabb. So we covered, uh, Alhamd, and we did already Allah. And the Rabb, you know, the basic translation is the Lord, but a Rabb is the owner 
who has full authority over his property. So Arab linguistically means the master of the one who has the authority to lead. You know, all of these meanings are correct for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it is alone, uh, the word Rabb is used. It's, it's used only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes it is used in daily usage. For example, uh, it can be used when you relate to certain things. For example, they call Rabbu Dar, the master of such and such object. object. So it could be the, the, how, the, the head of household, for example, Rabbul Dar. But when you just use Rabb by itself, it goes directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is, and the continuation of the verse says, Rabbul Alameen. Another important word here is the meaning of Al Alameen here is the pillar of, the pillar, plural of Alam, Alameen, worlds, or the universe, the existence. So, uh, the word alam is already itself is a plural uh, word, means um, uh, the plural, but when you put it in alami, it's the plural of the plural. That means Allah is the Lord of everything in existence. That's why scholars said that anything than himself, whatever in the existence, Allah is the Lord of everything. And there is a verse in the Quran that when Pharaoh questions Musa السلام, in Surah Shu'ara, and he said, Qala wama rabbul He said, Pharaoh, Fir'aun, said, and what is the Lord of the Alami? He's asking, uh, who is he? And then the answer of Musa السلام, was called, wal ardi wama baynahuma in kuntum He said that Musa السلام, in response, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and all that is between them, if you seek to be convinced with certainty. So when we say, what is the definition, quick definition of al-alamin, means whatever in, in existence. So everything in the universe, you know, basically the universe, the whole universe and, and in it. So everything, um, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything in existence. That's the, the quick, definition or the basic definition of Rabbul Alameen, the whole universe or the worlds. So plural of the plural. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated his beautiful attributes uh, in order to show his mercy and compassion that is so intense and continuous. We heard in Basmala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most merciful and most compassionate. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And then the third word, verse is, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim again. The most merciful and the most compassionate. Allah is, you know, telling us that how loving, kind, and generous God He is. And then, since we covered this Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, I'm going to move on to the next one. Maliki Yawmiddin, the owner of the recompense, the owner of the judgment day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his sovereignty of the day of resurrection, but this does not negate his sovereignty over all other things. So it doesn't mean that Allah is the, the owner of the judgment. It doesn't mean that he is the owner of only, only judgment. No, he is the owner of everything and every time. But here we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Maliki Yawmiddin. The word Malik is really another interesting word. Uh, Malik means the owner uh, or the master. But when you shorten the meme, if you say Maliki Yawmiddin, it becomes king of the day of the judgment. So both meanings are, or both way of recite, recitation is okay because there is a different variant of recitation. Um, recitation and, uh, and um, you know, you see in different Qira'as, uh, the, the Qira'ats, you know, uh, the common qira'ah is Malik Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the judgment day. But you would hear Malik Yawmiddin. So it means he is the king of the judgment day, the day of recompense. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that day, the, the, we are talking about the judgment day, no one will 
be allowed to speak without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. And this, you know, verse also teaches us that, you know, you have no right to judge anyone. The only one who is going to judge is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that will take place in the judgment day. And, and there is a powerful verse from Surah to Naba in the second page, and that, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّى لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال الصواب. So the day that a ruh means Jibril, Gabriel, and the angels will stand forth in rows, and they will not speak except him, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, whom the most gracious Allah allows. So the only one who is going to be speaking is the one who is going to get permission from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a difficult. Thing to imagine or picture. Of course, we, you know, were uh, not permitted to think about, imagine about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as physical appearance. We know that he's a spiritual being. Um, but when you read this verse and the angels, again, you know, there are so many narrations about the looks of angels, but try to imagine, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are there and, and all the humanity, they are resurrected and waiting and they all are quiet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يتكلمون. So no one is speaking إلا except من أذن له الرحمن. See, Rahman is taking place here again, the most merciful. The only one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permits. And there is another beautiful and again powerful verse similar to this one in Surah Tutaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَخَشَعَاتِ الْأَصْوَاتُ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ فَلَا تَسْمَعُوا إِلَّا هَمْسَةً So again, this shows the is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It says, and all voices will be humbled for the most gracious Allah, and nothing shall you hear but the low voice of their footsteps. Again, try to imagine. In the judgment day, there is no sound, Everyone is, you know, quite silent, um, silenced, and and says Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This part is beautiful. It says that فلا تسمعوا إلا همسة. You don't hear anything except the low voice of the the footsteps of those, you know, are there for the judgment day. Uh, so that's that's the 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 judgment day. Maliki يوم الدين. Uh, wow, time is flying. I thought that I would be able to finish the first half uh, today, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So I'm going to, at the time, is already a little beyond uh, our uh, plan. So I'm going to stop here, and then next time, next Monday, I'm, we'll start from here, Yawmuddi, or Maliki Yawmuddi, and then go beyond, inshallah. But please, uh, my um, humble suggestion, focus on those three verses and somewhat, you know, the not only the bare minimum translation, but a little deeper meaning, you know, what Allah means, what Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, and then, you know, the day of judgment. So whenever you recite, please do a little more contemplation and try to understand, you know, how compassionate, how merciful, how loving, how kind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then in the meantime, that we have no right to judge anyone and it totally belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on our deeds. So that's the message of the day. And sorry for keeping a little longer than usual. Let me call the event. And then after the event, I'll get back to your questions if you have any. If not, then there are some dua requests. And if you want anyone to be prayed uh, sick or passed away please post on chat you know box and and then also i have a suggestion for myself and for you inshallah uh, i'll share right after salat al asha so let me call the event <clears throat>
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا ايها النبي انا ارسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذني وسراجا منيرا وبشر المؤمنين بان لهم من الله فضلا كبيرا ولا تطع الكافرين والمنافقين ودع اذاهم وتوكل على الله وكفى بالله وكيلا الله اكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إياك نعبد وإياك الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوله حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد نحي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير before I'm looking if there's any dua request I don't see it on the chat box but I have two names please remember these uh, brothers in your prayer uh, brother Amir Karam and brother Aziz Hussein both are sick in the hospital please keep them in your prayers inshallah we're going to pray in our prayers but um, uh, may Allah keep them shifa inshallah I mean alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Allahumma laka alhamdu kullu wa Allah yours is the praise Allahumma absud alayna min barakatika wa rahmatika wa fadlika wa rizqik wa Allah bestow on us from your mercy, from your blessings, grace and provisions. Allahumma inna nas'aluka na'ima al-muqimma alladhi la yahul wa la yazul. Wa Allah, we ask you for the eternal pleasure that never ends or fades away. Allahumma habib ilayna al-imana wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-kusuka wa al-asyan wa ja'alna min al-rashidin. Wa Allah, make faith dear to us and beautify it in our hearts and make disbelief, sin and disobedience, dislike to us, and make us among the rightly guided. Allahumma innana nas'aluka al-huda wa tuqa wa al-afaf wa al-ghina. O Allah, we ask you for guidance, taqwa, virtue, and sufficiency. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenika wa ta'atik. O Allah, the controller of the heart, turn our hearts to your religion and obedience. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه والله show us the truth as true and inspire us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it اللهم اشف المرضانا وارحم موتانا والله give quick healings for those who are sick and bless the souls of those who passed away اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات آمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسوله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا 
أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إن الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers, our du'as, dear brothers and sisters Now quickly I would like to go over your comments and if there is any questions So the first one is says Sheikh if you can please keep me in your du'as says one of our brothers Yes brother we are in our prayers inshallah still asking Allah for this one thing that I want more than anything well, as you remember, I think the best way to pray is if it's in your, you know best for you, if it's khair, then inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant for you. If not, then whatever is best for you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may grant for you, inshallah. And please, you keep me in your prayers to all of you, so we'll keep each other in prayers, inshallah. We are a community or a big family, alhamdulillah. You all are in my prayers. And the other one says that it's scary, it's scary thinking if the day of judgment, I get nervous maybe as I am coming to my end life and keep dreaming my departed beloved mother. Yeah, dear sisters, you know, we all are going to depart this country. Nobody is eternal. I know, uh, I know, you know, the, your point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and grant you again, happy, healthy and long life. But the life is beautiful only not only if it's long but if it's spent on the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is the definition of beautiful life long but on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I think and speaking of dua when we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should yearn that type of life long on your path with a lot of ibadah and good deeds so inshallah may Allah grant you both and if there is a dua I can say to help with that yeah as i mentioned you know when you ask anything from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask if it's best for you if not then whatever is best i think that's the best way to approach uh, that you wish anything from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, one of our sisters is saying that as one of the steps in marriage it is yeah so yes uh, you know, the Fatiha is recited in so many different occasions. I mean, like we pray, not only we pray in our prayers, uh, people are, one, one of the names of, uh, you know, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha is a Shifa. You know, they recite, they call Ruqya for the purpose of healing. You know, it's all about, of course, faith with all conviction, recite to yourself. Um, and, you know, the meaning and the the guidance is the actual shifa, of course, but as again, it's like you know, the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Woman nazilum nal Qurani ma huwa shifa wa rahmatu lil mu'mineen. So it's shifa for us, and then also mercy, the Quran. So, and I believe in both ways, uh, either guidance or just reciting, you know, for your healing. So, yes, it's, it's recited also in that occasion as well for marriage, and um. And there are assalamu alaikum and wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And yes, inshallah, I will keep, we will keep you brothers and sisters in our prayers. It says, my mom is asking if someone is widowed, can she go to Hajj with their nephews? Yeah, I mean, like, um, you know, as long as if they have a someone, a male figure with uh female uh, should be fine and then uh, the next one is thank you i always add to my okay yeah thank you so much for praying for us and keeping all you in my prayers says one of our sisters alhamdulillah thank you so much good and before i leave i would like to remind you something this is really important again um first to myself and to you dear brothers and sisters the days are getting shorter and shorter and the weather is cooling down. Alhamdulillah. I know it is really challenging to fast in the month, you know, like uh, fasting in the long days and in hot days. 
uh, if it's mandatory, of course, if you're healthy, no way you have to fast. Uh, you, we are fasting, but the, with the Nafi prayer is really, really challenging. It's hard. But now these days, since it's really, the days are shorter and the, weathers are, uh, the weather is cooler. So my humble, let's encourage each other and pray uh, the fast on, on uh, Mondays and Thursdays. And you will see that I'm like, I don't have to say that. I'm sure you experienced it. And you will feel much more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will feel much more peaceful, much more, uh, you know, uh, spiritual and connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would really encourage you to start this Thursday and then the following on Mondays and Thursday, if you are healthy uh, enough to fast, of course, uh, that would be wonderful. That's, that was going to be my request. Uh, and, and this Thursdays, uh, Thursday is going to be the uh, new day for spiritual fireside chat and not on Tuesdays anymore. So we have Mondays and Thursdays, same time at 7.30. Mondays, the message of the Quran. Thursdays are the, the fireside, uh, spiritual fireside chat. And this um, Friday and Thursday, my guest uh, is going to be Dr. Islam Abdullah. And his topic is going to be salvation as it was described in the Quran. So please join us on Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. But the next uh, week on Tuesday, uh, we have a special program just for next Tuesday at 7 p.m. That one is called Facing uh, with Our uh, Mortality. So that will be at 7 p.m. Just one time on Tuesday. Just wanted to remind that you, I just want to remind you and you will see it on the Facebook and the website, inshallah. And until then, see you. Thank you so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and keep me in your prayers. You will be in my prayers. And have a great night and see you on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.